Hi, Max Mathias here. Uh, today I'm starting a new kind of, let's say, series on intermediate microeconomics. Uh, and so to start with that, we'll talk about consumer preferences. So what are consumer preferences? I think the best way to kind of get into that is to really take a step back and basically say, how do economists think about consumers, right? So all of us are consumers in our everyday life. What is our underlying kind of theory about how we think people operate? And the answer is quite simple. We think people choose the best bundle of goods that they can afford. And you'll notice that best and afford are both bolded and in red. There's going to be separate videos about each of those. Today, I'm going to be talking about what do we mean when we say the best bundle. I'll have a video on uh, the budget constraint, which is what we talk about when we say, well, what can they afford? But today, we're going to be focusing just on how do we define best, right? Or how do we think about uh, what is best for an individual when they're going out and making purchases. So with this, we have preferences. I'll use apples and bananas as the example goes throughout just to be concrete as possible, um, but substitute with any other goods if you want, right? You don't like apples and bananas or you know you want to choose different A and B starting things, that's totally fine. I have no preferences. When I do this in class, I use good one and good two. That's a little bit vague. I'll do apples and bananas here, but again, you're your own person, choose different goods if you want to. So we're gonna have two bundles of goods, right? And a bundle is just a combination of, in this case, apples and bananas that a person is considering, right? So that bundle X is XA, XB, and bundle Y is YA, YB. The important thing here, I know we're kind of cloaking this with math uh, and eventually it does you know, become quite mathematical, but it's important to kind of remember behind this X sub A, X sub B, is that this really is just some amount of apples, like five. And that is just some amount of bananas, like 10. And they can be whatever you want, right? Five apples, 10 bananas, three apples, six bananas, 10 apples, two bananas, right? It doesn't matter. These are just basically meant to stand in for some arbitrary amount. Same thing going on with Y. So don't let this kind of math notation confuse you at all. We're just talking about apples and bananas here. What we're interested in is comparing this X bundle to this Y bundle, right? And so with that, we have this preference relation, which I don't have a name for. It's basically, you'll notice it kind of looks like a greater than or equal to sign. That is a really good way of doing it. Basically, it's just kind of curvy, right? So in comparing X to Y, we generally think that there are three possible kind of scenarios. The first is X, uh, and then it's kind of the squiggly line without the little bottom part. That is read as X is strictly preferred to Y. What that means in English is I'll always choose X over Y, because I like it more, right? And again, this depends on person to person. This isn't some universal thing where if I have these two bundles, X and Y, everyone always likes X over Y. We know that doesn't happen. People are different. This is just saying that me personally, I like X over Y. It could be that it has more apples and bananas or vice versa. Could be that it has less, doesn't matter. The idea though is in writing that, right? X kind of squiggle Y, you know that I like X over Y, full stop. The middle is what we call a tilde, right? So X tilde Y is read as I am indifferent between X and Y, right? So basically, I like them the same. Flip a coin, I'm just as happy. If you gave me X, cool. If you gave me Y, also cool, right? I like them the same. The last is actually now combining both of those. So X kind of with the squiggle is read as I weakly prefer X to Y. This one I think is kind of the hardest to intuitively grasp, right? Saying, hey, I like this more than this, or I like them the same, makes sense. This one is basically, I like X at least as much as I like Y. I could like it more, I could also like it the exact same, but it's important to know I like it at least as much as I like Y. The way I always like to simplify this though, is just think of these as greater than, equal, and greater than and equal to respectively. Right, because ultimately when we start to bring in uh, what we call the utility framework, which I will make a video about, I promise in the future, uh, this corresponds to basically higher utility, which basically just means happier, right? So X makes me happier than Y, X makes me as happy as Y, X makes me at least as happy as Y, right? We kind of go through this thing of talking about preference since this is a preference relation, but if it helps you to think of writing the greater than equal and then greater than and equal to, that's fine too, right? I'm not a stickler when it comes to this stuff. So let's quickly talk about assumptions. It's a little bit weird and this, again, can be kind of off-putting for students when they do it, but these assumptions, I promise you, they're simple and they're not crazy and there's a reason we do them. The first, preferences are complete. 
The idea behind this is that you can compare any two bundles, right? You either like one more than the other, you like them equally, or somewhere in between, right? What we're really trying to avoid is a scenario where you're like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this bundle relative to the thing, right? It's quite morbid, but I'll tell my students, like, if I put a gun to your head, you can either say, I like this one more, or I like them the same. Those are both valid responses, right? We're just trying to eliminate that situation where we don't know how we feel about a particular bundle. Odds are you always have some feeling. Even if it's, I like them the same, that's fine, right? I just don't, we don't want you to be in a scenario where like, I don't know how I feel about this, right? Because then at that point, uh, if I can't compare one bundle to every other ones, we're in a kind of weird situation here. The other one, preferences are reflexive. All this means, is that every bundle is at least is as at least as good as itself, right? So X is at least as good as that same thing X. Five five apples will always be as good as five apples, and I should say identical, right? Like for me, I'm a big apple person. Uh, I love Cosmic Crisps and Honey Crisps and Granny Smith, but like we can all agree, Red Delicious crap, right? So for me, five Honey Crisps obviously better than five Red Delicious. Everyone thinks that. I don't know why they make Red Delicious anymore. Um, but the idea, right, is five hunting crisp apples is as good as five hunting crisp apples, right? That's the, that's the idea here. It's nothing too crazy. However, if you talk to toddlers, I do have one asleep behind me right now. Um, they don't have reflexive preferences because toddlers are crazy, right? This isn't something that is, you know, mind bending and you're supposed to think deeply about. We're just including this, uh, for completeness. And then the last is preferences are transitive, So if we have three bundles, X, Y, and Z, if you like X more than Y and Y more than Z, then by that property, you should like X more than Z. I will say this is probably the most controversial assumption. We're trying to rule out going in circles forever, right? So if you had a case where like X is better than Y, Y is better than Z, but then Z is better than X, you're in an infinite loop. And where do we stop? But we do know that people uh, violate transitivity in real life, right? You know, you may like Coke more than Pepsi and Pepsi more than like RC Cola, but maybe you like RC Cola more than Coke because you're a weirdo. I don't know. But while I generally think transitive is a pretty good assumption, sometimes people don't, uh, you know, obey it. That's fine. So recap, this is a short video. We assume people buy the best bundle that they can afford. That preference relation, right, those three individual ones allow us to rank bundles so we can define what a person considers best. Simple as that. You could give me two bundles, you could give me a million bundles, as long as I can go through and rank them all, I can tell you what that best aspect is of consumer behavior. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of this video, please consider liking and or subscribing, and I'll see you next time.